So first is a type A evaluation. So type A evaluation, uh, definition is coming here. Evaluation of a component of measurement uncertainty by a statistical analysis of measured quantity values obtained under defined measurement conditions. So the, we need a large number of measured quantity values. That is obvious. Of course, they should be under similar conditions. So you cannot take a few values under one condition and a few values under another condition. Then you cannot call it a type A evaluation. Okay. So under similar conditions, you should take a number of readings and then we do a statistical analysis and evaluate the uncertainty. Such an uncertain evaluation is called a type A evaluation of measurement uncertainty. So the result of the measurement is obtained on the basis of a series of observations obtained under. So these conditions, again, we can define what are the type of conditions. So repeatability conditions are uh, almost everything is constant. Everything is, we try to keep constant, but still we get variation. <clears throat> repeatability conditions means the same measurement procedure. We cannot combine two different measurement procedures. It should be same measurement procedure. The same observer, even different observers are not permitted. But this sometimes we can't do, we can't really follow. So then actually it will not be strict repeatability, it will be partial repeatability conditions being maintained. So the same procedure used on the same conditions. So environment should be similar. The same location. So not two different labs, you cannot combine. And repetition over a short period of time. So we can't take one reading today and one reading after six months and then combine them. Okay, repeatability conditions are like this. Same observer, so that is sometimes very difficult. So perfect repeatability condition, we may not be able to get, but we try to achieve this. But still, even though we are keeping all these constants, we still get variations, right? So we say this is an explanation, something influence quantities that can affect the measurement result are not held completely constant. So quantities which can affect the measurement result are not held completely constant. That's why we get variation in the measurement result. So influence quantities, what are they? Any quantity or a quantity that is not the measurement, but that affects the result of the measurement. So it is not the quantity which is being measured, but it is something else, but affects the result of the measurement. For example, measurement standards, reference materials, reference data, ambient temperature, barometric pressure, humidity. So all these, so in case of dimensional measurement, temperature is a very major influence quantity. So any change in temperature or certain change in dimension. So ambient temperature is not the measurement, but it affects the result of the measurement. So it is an influence quantity. So when we say sources of uncertainty, so that is actually we are trying talking about this. What are the influence quantities? So instead of variable in measurement, this uh, VIM and GUM, they use this term quantity. Okay, so these are influence quantities. Okay, so now we go to the computation of type A. So the assumption is that all systematic errors have been identified and have been corrected for. So you should first correct for the systematic errors. So the compensation, again, will have some uncertainty. So that is the systematic uncertainty. That is, we'll treat as a type B uncertainty. So there should not be any uncorrected systematic error. Now we'll see different cases. So we start with a large sample, then extend it to small sample, and then apply it to regression over a range. So regression happens when an instrument which is used over a range is calibrated. So that's why in our lab we are doing experiments, several experiments, like calibration of pressure gauge. Okay, first two is uh, universal machines, microscope, and thread measurements we have finished. So there, there is no calibration. 
Next is auto collimator. There also there is no calibration. But regression can be applied there. We'll learn in the theory class later, the computation of the answer of this uh, straightness error. Uh, but uh, OK, so we'll uh, regression over range can be uh, come in auto collimator, but otherwise it will come in all the other calibration experiments like stress strain, then uh, calibration of dial gauge, calibration of pressure gauge, etc. Uh, this is coming I calibration uh, thermocouple is in the next cycle. Okay. So cases of type A. So now let us see type A large sample. So when there is a large sample. Okay, large sample still uncertainty you may not be able to calculate when if the instrument resolution is not sufficient. So I told you if you have take the meter rod available in a textile shop and try to measure the length of a table, for example, all the readings will be very similar because the table, the length variation is much smaller. So you will not get any variation, you cannot calculate any statistical, you cannot get any distribution. It will be the single value. So then we assume the measurements are normally distributed. Of course, we can check whether they are distributed in case of a large sample. We can plot a histogram or better is what is called a normal probability plot. I don't know whether it is taught in your course, but nowadays with software, um, we prefer to plot a normal probability plot. So if measurements are normally distributed, then so the readings, we take a large number of independent readings. So greater than 30. So this is again arbitrary. Why? So the difference between n and n minus 1, 30 and 29, or 30 and 31 becomes very small. So this is little arbitrary. Maybe in some cases, 30 also, equal to 30 also can be considered large sample, etc. It is subjective. But generally, we say 30. So Suppose these observations are x1, x2, uh, xn. So we get, get n equal to 30 or the more than 30 readings. So we calculate the mean of these readings, x bar equal to sigma xi by n. So average of all these readings is the arithmetic mean. And then we also calculate the standard deviation of these readings, s equal to square root of sigma of xi minus x bar whole squared by n minus 1. So why n minus 1? So we have already calculated the average, so we have lost 1 degree of freedom. So in case this is a sample from a large population, we use n minus 1. Then this s becomes an estimator, an unbiased estimator of the population standard deviation. Okay, But if this is the population, then s here we use n. Okay, so you read the book by Kirkup, that is, uh, he gives a detailed explanation about all this. I think even the lab uh, editor uh, material, I have put that one chapter from Kirkup's another book. Kirkup has written two books, one on measurement uncertainty, one on data analysis. So that data analysis chapter is there in the lab course on uh, in editor server. Okay, so after taking large number of readings, we can calculate the average and standard deviation. So I hope you will be able to do this. So type A, large sample, measurement result is X bar. Calculated sample standard deviation S is used to estimate the population standard deviation sigma of S. So since the number of samples is not the full population, there is always some uncertainty. Okay, anyway, we use this S to estimate sigma of X. So if sigma is the standard deviation of X, we assume that S is the standard deviation of X. Now what will be the standard deviation of X bar? So X can vary between with standard deviation sigma. Instead of that, we'll say it can vary with standard deviation S. Then standard deviation of X bar will be S by root n. 
okay i think you would have learned in your statistics so standard deviation of the average is sigma by rho 10 so sigma we estimate by s so standard uncertainty of the result x bar is given by s by rho 10 so this is the standard deviation of the result x bar so we have already seen measurement result is expressed as a mean x bar and an uncertainty so uncertainty may be standard uncertainty or it may be coverage interval okay so this is uh, type a large sample okay so for the normal distribution p percentage of the distribution of means is covered by the interval x bar plus or minus k into s by rho 10 okay so for 90 percent coverage k will be 1.64 for normal distribution 90 percent of the population will be between x bar plus or minus 1.64 s by rho 10 1.64 sigma so 95 percent probability cover will be covered by x bar plus or minus 1.96 standard deviation of x bar 99 percent probability coverage will be obtained by 2.78 times the standard deviation of x bar plus or minus k in the s by root so this is the coverage interval for type a large sample okay so repeated hardness measurement of a sample of material gives the following results so these are the readings so i don't know so okay if you want um, so any please try to calculate the standard deviation okay it is not necessary okay this so you will do this problem in your server as a quiz okay that's a practice problem and then a final problem so practice problem i think will be the same numbers so determine the 95 percent coverage interval for the measurement result so how do we do this so who can explain uh, sharon has come is sharon okay here is so this is find the x bar we find standard deviation so please learn to use your scientific calculator use the statistics function to calculate standard deviation so x bar plus or minus s by root 10 so okay what is the probability 95 percent is chosen here so mean is this much standard deviation is this so 95 percent coverage interval is given by x bar plus or minus 1.96 s by root 10 so the two limits are 295.64 to 303.49 because we don't need so many digits so anyway to reduce the uncertainty in the calculations so if you are using calculator don't delete and re-enter use the old value then you will get a final answer so you have to be careful in your server uh, you need at least one percent accuracy in the final answer otherwise you will not get mark okay so please maintain sufficient digits in the significant digits in the earlier calculations okay so uh, now onwards all our numerical problems so please be careful in so learn to how to use edu server so that's why i have given a practice problem so that you have to learn actually you can also enter the unit edu server has that option but it creates a lot of confusion so finally i think i have eliminated that unit except in some questions so in some problems unit is important you have to enter the unit properly and it it will recognize if it is millimeter you convert it to meter and enter it it will convert and check the answer so that is a uh, edu server is very powerful you can answer enter answer there will be two boxes you will this for one for the number and one for the unit okay in some problems only 
Okay, otherwise I'll write the unit on the right side. So then you don't have to bother about unit. So where it is mentioned, you have to, for example, the uh, uncertainty of two variables and all, I have, unit is important, so that's why I have kept it kept there. So because if you change the unit, sensitivity and all will change. Okay, so this is type A large sample. Then next is type A, assuming normal distribution and you choose a small sample. So if the measurements are normally distributed and the number of readings is small, then as Joel Sebastian said, the distribution applied is the T distribution. So estimation of the population standard deviation sigma by the sample standard deviation S so we cannot just S replace sigma by S, but there is some additional uncertainty taken into account by the T distribution with appropriate degrees of freedom. So you have to know, understand what is degrees of freedom. So for one variable, you have calculated the average, so one degree of freedom is lost, so N minus one is the degrees of freedom. So type A normal small sample, P percentage is covered by X bar plus or minus TP nu, S by root 10. So T is chosen from the following table for 95% coverage with degrees of freedom, mu equal to N minus 1. So this is the table. So in the gum, there is one appendix which gives this table, uh, full table for different probabilities. So usually I used to ask students to copy down this in the classroom so that you can do problems in the class. So now it is not necessary you are using. Please see the gum which has the table for all different probabilities. Okay, so S we have calculated, N is the number of samples, then P, P comma nu, so nu is equal to N minus one. So if there are 10 samples, you have to choose nu equal to nine, take T for 95%, is, this is the value. If it is 90%, you have to choose another one, and then compute the coverage interval. Okay, so repeated hardness measurement of a sample of material gave the following results. Okay, only five samples are there. So we cannot judge whether this is normally distributed or not, so we have to assume it is normally distributed determine the 95% coverage interval for the measurement result. So compute X bar, compute standard deviation sigma, then X bar plus or minus T95 P, T95 nu into S by root n. This will give the coverage interval. So 278.372, 320.03 is the coverage interval for the mean have mean hardness. 